Hello everyone and welcome to episode 35 of the Scottish Silver Bat podcast and yeah it's been a while since we've done one of these but I thought new year new podcast and uh, get things up and running because I think all three of us have got quite a big year coming so we get a lot of good feedback with regards to people following what we are doing and want to know kind of what our thoughts on certain things are and what we do and our processes and just all that sort of stuff so it's always good to get get an insight into where the you know the top amateurs in the in the country are, country are doing. So, um, also we got Jack on now permanently, so the third third face and voice of the podcast just to give it a bit more zest. Um, so we'll uh, we'll start off with Jack then in terms of uh, this year. What have uh, what have you got planned for this year? Uh, to be honest, I'm probably. The best way to describe it is to do what Greg's done in the past two years. Just <laughs> <laughs> try and pack on some meat. So mm-hmm. last kind of couple of years we've competed back to back. So this is probably the first kind of good chance to actually slap some tissue on. Kind of locked in a good training program. We've kind of got the reins on food. Um, so yeah, got a good plan in place for Ben. So just try and become a an undeniable super heavyweight, I guess. I was a baby super yeah. heavyweight last year. So Try and become a, a proper, well-established super heavy. Mm-hmm. What weight have you got to the standing? What's that, mate? What weight have you got to the, the moment? Uh, right now, I'm waking up like one two two, one two one, one two two. Um, pounds, Andy. Uh, two seventy yeah. something, two seventy four ish, yeah. two seventy three, thereabouts. Um, so yeah, but I feel good at that. It's not like a sloppy. Like I feel, I feel good. Like I'm All performing right. good in the gym. I'm not getting out of breath. Like I'm still pretty. Like cutting about the house, everything's like fine and easy. So I think there's quite a lot of room to actually push it now. So, oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. What are you so, saying that food wise just now? Like, what's give us some uh, values? It's not kind of, it's not nuts. It's like four, it's not as high as I've been. My training days are four and nine, just over four and nine. No. Um, but splitting it across seven meals, just to just seven smaller meals seem to work better for me. Yeah. Um, I've started blending two of my meals. A day, um, it's going down, it's going down a bit better. So, what, what like ones? Chicken, chicken and rice soup twice a day, is basically. So, it's um, you're on there, mate. <laughs> so, nah, it's, <laughs> uh, it's the food's going down pretty well, eh? So, um, yeah. what are you gonna do when you get 6,000 calories? Blend, oh, just blend, just blend all of them, <laughs> just blend them all, just do a proper hunter, yeah. Oh, blend everything, yeah. Nah, I don't think I could nah. do it. I don't think I could do this whole thing if I had to blend my meals. Be a and, uh, super heavyweight on Juice Plus. Oh, uh, fuck. Nah. It's, you uh, think it's your digestion set alright with that? Uh, yeah, so I struggle, the time of day I struggle to put food in the most is the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's just, I don't know if I've got quite a busy morning because I still work full time and I'm up and about, I'm not sure, but mm-hmm. um, it's so it's quite convenient for me just to have two meals that I can just neck. Um, Fair but yeah, the, the the plan is to get out of full time work. So yeah. hopefully that so then, will change things. Do those meals just sit in a shaker all day, like in your bag? No, I make them fresh. I mean, at least make them fresh, like. <laughs> Aye, that's at least something, then. Eh? Yeah, so no, it's not too bad. But nah, simple things like cream and ice. I'm, I'm at the point now, you know, oats are like out of the question. So I drink mm. my cream and ice. I've always done that. And it's, right, okay. Um, but yeah, so. Yeah. And you're predicting like just this year, just this year off. Just uh, well, through till probably. I, I I need to see the show calendar for next year, but realistically, yeah. probably middle of next year. Like I'm not naive to the improvements I need to make, and it's like some pretty big things. So I need to bring up my whole posterior. So it's going to take a good year of, mm-hmm. um, you know, focusing on the pool. So yeah, because obviously the two bros have moved like the British now. Like the two bros British is now in October. All oh, right, okay. Like that's, that's like where they like it traditionally sat with the UKBFF. So I think that's a, like a good move on their part because it made no sense to do the the British in July and then still have qualifiers, uh, still have regionals after it. After it, that yeah, makes sense. So like, it was a lot of the good regionals after it as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The season finale should be the British because then you're just relying on if you've got those. You know those uh, all those regionals afterwards after the British. You've then got British competitors having to rely on European shows to 
you know, go get a pro card or whatever, compete, and you're not displaying like the British scene like mm-hmm. thoroughly because you're only getting like the guys that decided to diet from Christmas onward. So yeah. I thought it was a good decision on their part, but um, yeah. But the, so obviously, what they used to do with River is to have as many like open pro qualifiers as they do now. Like, it's obviously mm. a lot more than what there used to be. Mm. So, it's kind of good to keep it where it used to be. And so, like, I think it should be the finale of the year. Yeah. Because it is such a prestigious title you'd really want to win. Yeah. What's, um, what's going down with that? Um, what's it called? The True or something? Oh, yeah. The Arnold's. The new Arnold's. Aye, the, uni- aye, the renamed Arnold, yeah. aye. Fuck knows, yeah. Fuck knows how going to go then. Aye, yeah. fuck that shit. <clears throat> I don't know why anyone like, bothers with the Expo game anymore. Well, especially in the UK anyway. I think it's, I don't know, I just see it as a complete, like, maybe because I'm, I'm way past, like, the point of caring about, like, Expos and stuff. That, just, that stuff doesn't interest me anymore. You know what I mean? It was my yeah. first one, and it was, it was so... It w- none of it was bodybuilding focused, in my opinion. Aye. You had like you had the amateur stage tucked away in the corner, and the rest of it was like, mate, there was like there was like amazing amateurs competing in the corner doing bodybuilding, but you had and there was nobody in the audience. Well, there was people in the audience, but not many. And you had cunts on a fucking sorry, uh, see what, on a treadmill on the bear runner doing the Aye. crossfit thing, and there's rows of people queuing up to see it. Uh-huh. It's just too like. Yeah, I, I actually didn't enjoy the expo. I really enjoyed the show, really enjoyed yeah, yeah. Uh, the bodybuilding aspect, but the expo itself didn't enjoy it. Didn't enjoy I think it. I must have spent about a grand total of 20 to 30 minutes at the expo. Yeah. And that was only because I went to pick up like some fucking free stuff from my sponsors. That was it. Yeah. I never went. But like, yeah. honestly, like, I've said this a hundred times, and I'll probably sound like a broken record, but I think our Arnold was like a hundred times better than your <clears> one. Yeah. Especially it was stand on like the big stage. That was like what was appealing. Yeah. And yeah. Just getting put away in a shitty stage in the corner. It was pretty upsetting because that's what we expected. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. But I mean the, I don't know if you say um, so on the night, the Saturday Friday night, JP held a like yeah, a yeah. media athlete thing in the Hilton. And mm-hmm. that was that was better than anything at the expo because you had literally every pro competing in the pro show the next day in the same room. And yeah, it, was, yeah. it wasn't like cues. It was just everyone's walking about, and you could just bump into people. And you know, we met James, like Jamie Johal, all these guys, and it was like really casual. Mm-hmm. Um, that was probably the best best part for me. Yeah, that'd yeah, be cool. yeah. It was a yeah. Fuck, why would you? I don't understand. That was the same with the Arnold US. Um, mm. Like fucking hundreds of people watching CrossFit, and I don't understand the fast they were watching CrossFit. You're literally watching people train. That's that's yeah. what it is. You know what I mean? It's just you're just you're going to go to a pure gym and watch a fucking circuit class. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah, but obviously people not. But unless you're willing to spend a lot of money at an expo, like on merchandise and stuff like that, it's you can get around it in fucking seconds. I remember the, my first expo was Body Power in 2013, and like it was good, but. You know, I only got like the, the single day pass. I'm glad I only just did that. You know, I mean, it's it's definitely a, like I said, if you want to spend a lot of fucking money in fair play, but um, I it's definitely for I don't want to like categorize people, but it's for like a certain person, like yeah. usually people who are still like uber excited about you know being in the gym and just starting out and all that sort of stuff, and they want to go see all this stuff. And for us, I think it's very just like. It's, it's it's a mood point now, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the donut stand good. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, shame. Like, that could be such like a great show for years and years to come, and you just fucked it. Fucked it. All the gangs yeah. have fucked it for us. Uh, Pretty much. What are you doing, Greg? What are you <clears throat> been doing recently? Um, I know it's pretty close to starting prep now. Yeah, I'm currently just uh, in the health phase it's now, being my third week. Um, so yeah, just trying to pretty much maintain strength and body composition and just trying to hold weight as best I can. Um, mm-hmm. I know I'm going to hold weight much better this time than I did uh, my previous health phase because, like, as you know, like, if you're pushing hard right up to the health phase, you're going to be like, holding a lot more like water accumulation in the muscles and because you've just pushed like to the max of like 
food as high as possible, train as high as possible, and then it's like cut back to healthies. But now, because I've held like 300 for like five to six weeks, my body composition got tighter and tighter and tighter. And I was literally mm-hmm. at like a stage where I was like really kind of hard, like quite good condition for that weight. I wasn't like mm-hmm. blown out as in like watery or like pushed to the max. So my weight's kind of almost hovered, which usually before it dropped like four or five kilos down in the health phase. Now I'm like pretty much staying about the same. So yeah. I think um, it's going to be much pleased. I'm really quite comfortable with this weight. But yeah, I should have like maybe four or five weeks left. And then I'll get my bloods done and then just uh, pretty much just start and prep from there. Yeah, that's what you kind of notice, isn't it? You get to that, that first time you get to like say like a weight and like you can go on like a 10 minute walk and lose 10 pounds. And then like the next time you go back to it, you can, you know, you can take time off, you can do whatever and you'll, you'll just sit there. No problem at all. Um, so that's obviously your, your body's getting kind of used to it because you always report guys who like push up to a new weight and they're always fucking complaining about this, complaining about that. Mm-hmm. But you know, they're not just, they're not just like their body just kind of settle in that, you yeah. know, in that time. Um, don't get me wrong, when you're a certain size, nothing's easy. Like wiping your ass is hard, fucking sliding in the like cars, just like getting off like a low sofa is fucking hard. Mm. But like when you're like pushed to the max at that point, like you're breathing, your back pumps, but your sore knees, training's like really bad because you can't keep up your cardiovascular through the session. But then, like I said, as the weeks went on, that 300 felt like what probably 280 felt like previously. Yeah. So I just kind of got better that weight and obviously I'm very comfortable there now um but yeah like, I think if I kept trying to push which me and Calm did have the discussion he was like we could maybe get up to like 305 possibly 310 I was like I feel horrific at 300 right now I really don't want to kind of carry on I'd like to solidify 300 which I yeah. think for a 5'9 guy is fucking heavy anyway I don't yeah. want to go much heavier so I just kind of want to solidify that I think that'll be enough tissue for that mm-hmm. so we're kind of going to prep probably in a healthier way than me just like dying so what you're telling everyone is you walk about with a booby bum what's that <laughs> <laughs> you walk, about, walk about with a poopy bum no nah, i've got a wife she plays, plays it and wipes it <laughs> Hose, hoses you down hi <laughs> that's what for is it not <laughs> sure she'd fucking disagree puts on my socks yeah. and everything sees right. hi <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's um, obviously we were both in the kind of race to reach 300 and um, you failed. You fucking fail. I got there <laughs> during the day. I got two, two, 297 was the highest I got in the morning. Um, and then I got to 302 during the day. Do you think it's funny though? Because it's like everybody was like the 300 benchmarks, like a fucking like the top of the pedestal you're like oh i'm fucking two i'm, I'm like 290 i'll get there in no time and then yeah. the boys just like no nah, they're like nah, 298 you fuck you no more Aye. it's like that like that two pounds or whatever it is is a nightmare to get mm. i know <clears> it's <throat> like you're getting in that territory where like that's what, that's what we say all the time like this is unhealthy as fuck yeah you know what i mean this is really unhealthy now um yeah it's I was I was glad that like when the time came to kind of back off a wee bit, mm-hmm. um, but I I know you were doing like like two cheats a week to try and force that weight up. Um, I could only stomach one a week. I just really didn't want to. I didn't want to do another one. But obviously, I've got that in the tank um, going forward to use in like the next off season if I really want to really really kind of push it hard that way. But you know, yeah. one one cheat a week that was enough to just be like hit me over the edge you know what I mean like this is just like a lot of fucking food and that so yeah. um, I don't know what it is and like it's obviously more volume of food as well but for some reason it just like cheats just sit so much better in my stomach mm-hmm. like I, I woke up this morning I was like fucking hell my stomach's like so flat and like before I like if I was probably didn't have a cheat I don't know if it would but like every time I have a cheat I wake up the next day and just feel like much better for it it's weird the body mm-hmm. just seems to accept them much better Maybe just bored of fucking clean food. Yeah, probably. <coughs> just gives a better fucking response to it. Yeah. But, uh, that's, that's the routes you have to take. I mean, like, you know, people worried about, like, 
you know, 100 calories here and 100 calories there. I was like, that's, that's not the game when you're, you know, pushing that weight. And I mean, it's... Um, How many thousands of calories are in this? Aye, exactly. Yeah, you're up to <laughs> fucking thousands. I'm like, wondering, like, where can I really fuck myself up with food? Uh-huh. You know I mean, so it's also pretty funny when people they're like, okay, well, I've got I've got a cheat meal on Saturday, so I took two eggs out of my diet on Thursday. I'm like, the fuck, mate! Like, just <laughs> eat the fucking cheat meal. Just have the just have the cheat meal. You're gonna fuck it anyway. So what's what's the point in doing that? You know what I mean? But in their head, it's pure funny. Man. That's what I had. I had that for my check-in the other day. I was like, come on. I have like, so many clients like um, over Christmas. They're like, oh. What uh, what card do you want me to put in after Christmas Day? I was like, none. Like fucking right. go have a meal, enjoy yourself for fuck's sake. It's like you're not yeah. you're not completing. You're like a lifestyle client. Go and fucking have a meal, and they're like, oh, yeah. I don't want to like fuck up. I'm like it's one meal. Like Christ, you're not doing anything about it. Just yeah. enjoy yeah. it. Do if you want to burn thousands of calories on a treadmill, you're gonna be there for a fucking long uh, time. Like, yeah. um, I right, it's, it's a complete fucking wrong mentality to have to have food yeah, that whole sure. like. Eating and fucking, you know, killing yourself just to enjoy yourself. You no, know I mean it's shite, but yeah, should be a nice balance for sure. Mm, yeah, too many that. Yeah, but um, how's um, life in the recovery, Andy? Shite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, can you say? When can you say? I've been given the green light to go back to like all the movement patterns patterns in my training, but with no weight. So sure. like, I can go. I can feel like obviously like. Um, all the machines and just kind of no contraction either so I've got to just lift the machine and put it back down so but like my physio said that this is the best slap tear recovery he's seen Um, because I'm able to get like a dumbbell fully extended above my head I can lat raise like the full range of the shoulder Um, he was like usually when you see a slap tear after two weeks which is where I am now like you can maybe just get your hand just below shoulder height I've got full range. I can do like full like backstroke and everything in my hand. So I've recovered like really quickly. Do you feel it? And it it's just steady. like it's when not, you're moving, like the actual tendon itself, or like yeah. Can you feel like any pain no. or tightness? Nothing. No, it's just literally just stiff. So like today, he was like, uh, lift your arm up or do like a lat raise until it hurts. And I was like, it's not hurting at all. He's like, well, where does it get stiff then? So I was like, right, it gets stiff about there. Um, so he freed it off, like put like a heat gun through it and all that, and then um, and went through it like massaging that. So, but it's still another four weeks. I, he said I can probably be back to 100% training by the end of the month. Um, so obviously I got to build a baseline of strength back up from there. But like, I thought I thought I'd be okay because I've been doing this for so long. I thought like a nice break would, would be like welcomed. But no, no, I got back from New York and I was like, well. Oh, Fuck this! This is shite. What do what do normal people do? Like, see, like if you do nothing, <laughs> see if you see if you come home from work and sit on the couch. How are you not a miserable cunt? Like, I've not been able to do the thing for. Well, I had a distraction for maybe like ten days, so like I've not been able to do it for fucking like four days, and like, yeah, I want to fucking kill everyone. I've had, I had the board and get something. Like not having oh. a thing. Yeah, it's not weird. even not even the gym. But like just not having a thing. Yeah, yeah. I just feel uh, I just feel like a bit useless to be fair. But I'll be given the green light, so at least I can do like a fucking weightless session tomorrow. So that'll be interesting to do. So I'll uh, I'll throw it in tomorrow and just kind of see see how it feels. But is it the uh, just the boredom or Jing is the actual feeling of like you know? Well, I didn't know how to explain it, but you know, like obviously when you train, you've got like little bits of soreness, but the muscles are blown out. You yeah. felt like there's like fatigue in the muscles, you know, that constant feeling that we always have. Is it because yeah. like that's not there and you're like, fuck, yeah. I need to train? Yeah, it feels like I feel deflated. Yeah, and that's yeah. a so horrible like, feeling. Oh, it's, it's, it's horrible. Like, For you, you us, that's like the worst. Yeah, you pure think you're losing muscle, but you're, you're yeah, fucking. But you're not, you're not. But it's just you're not. a horrible feeling. Yeah. So, it's one of those um, one step back for two step forwards sort of scenarios, I, isn't it? I know. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping, like, with this amount of rest as well, like, I got a huge bump in growth when I do go back. Um, I'm just going to spike everything up. So, you know, so I was really happy where my physique ended uh, right before the surgery. Um, so from there, I've got, 
think it's like 14 weeks until I start a prep. So that 14 weeks, easy game back, whatever I've lost, which I've not lost. Like we just said there, I've not lost any. It's just, it's all in my head. But hopefully it gives me a bit of time to still go on and improve as well. So, but it's, uh, the, but it's not the boredom aspect. It's definitely not because I'm kept busy doing my, no matter what. But um, I, I was literally having, have, literally having nightmares about, you know, I was in like my, my sling. I take my sling off and then look in the mirror. And then my like my arm was like that, like that. It's yeah. honestly, I've had two nightmares like that. It's fucking weird. Because <laughs> um, I I was saying like, like I said to you, Greg, like, see when I'm forty, I'm stopping. I'm yeah. I'm not competing. Blah 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 blah. And I was like, see when that time comes, I think I'll be all right mentally. You know what I mean? Just to walk away. But it's been fucking two weeks, and I'm suicidal. You know what I, I mean? think if you're prepared yeah. and you've got like goals or something planned or you've got mm. someone else to like transition your focus into, which you're fully prepared to dive into, you will mm. be fine. Mm. Um, I think like if you're, if you ended it shortly under shit terms, it would be a very tough pill to swallow. It would take a while. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I think I, that's exactly what it is, but mm. I, I've got, obviously I'm nowhere near where I want to be. And I know I've got plenty left yeah. in the tank. So, but yeah, but the fact is that I'm still being, told obviously like, you can get back into things now just take it nice and easy and just kind of you know don't put yourself back further than that but what I noticed right when I was carrying my suitcase around New York was like obviously I'll do it all with my left I never do anything with my left at all and I was like this shoulder kind of feels like that one before it was operated on I'm like fuck's sake can I feel that one done as well <laughs> so but I'm getting health insurance this time I put that right. fucking yeah fuck me um, like it was two hundred fifty pounds to talk to the surgeon. Yeah, like sitting there for ten minutes, and he was like, "Yep, that's torn bite." I was like, "That's fucking mental." But yeah, it kind of makes you kind of realize just how expensive all that shit is. But but being put to sleep was class. I love that. <laughs> Never had that before. Yeah. I did when I was five, but I don't remember it. Uh, no. I or anesthetic, yeah, no. whatever. No. Um, because like, it was. It was the surgeon was in front of me. There was a nurse, and then there was the anaesthetist. I'm just like chatting away. They're like, "Oh, how do you get into oh, bodybuilding?" Like, yeah. Gone, and like... then, boom, woke up. I was like, "The fuck?" That was so weird. I didn't have any dreams or anything. It was just black for yeah. like a split for a split second. It was so weird. But how long I did remember it take? What was that? How long I did remember it take? Uh, Seventy-five minutes. Fucking hell, that was quick. All right. Yeah. So it was just that, like he, the the surgeon basically said to me that he um, he gave Mike my shoulder like a facelift, basically. So yeah, it was. Good. So was it fully detached? No, it was just a, it was like so your labrum goes around your shoulder joint like that, mm -hmm. and then like in the middle of it, it's kind of split, and then the bicep tendons on this side, and this side's on the shoulder joint. So like when you like you just lose power because it's not like pulling hard in the joint so it wasn't like it wasn't detached or anything like that um, I still had full range through my shoulder I didn't have pain either which is weird um, I only felt pain in certain movements like when I barbell pressed mm -hmm. right in the bottom it was painful everywhere else it was fine uh, certain lat raise movements I couldn't do but honestly like, I could have went two years and, and not got it sorted and, and been fine uh, but you, you know what it's like? You don't want to just be fine and just work around things. You want to actually have, like, be 100% in your training. So I was like, no, nah, I'll just get it done. And that means I don't need to worry about it going forward. So, yeah. Yeah. But, Best uh, thing to do. Like, yeah. High off my tits afterwards as well. <laughs> the bed was from class. But um, just, just be, I remember. Just like, be left with bus shoulders now. All right. <laughs> all right. So it was. Uh, there was like these two nurses from the ship mate from like my operating bed into my bed. And I, I was so high though, like obviously they're trying to like lift me up. They're fucking tiny. And like I was like, I was laughing because I knew if this goes wrong one way, like I, they're fucked. Um <laughs> they're not getting me off the floor either. So that was quite funny. But uh I managed to get a, a bariatric gown. So like you know, the <laughs> ones like, like obese patients where I was like, oh, I fucking, I fucking made it. I put it up on my, I put it on my story. Yeah, I think I put it on my story. So I was like, class, nice and tight at the top, and 
nice and baggy at the bottom. So I say I'm hanging out. I, <laughs> I made sure I tightened it enough that I didn't have to. But hey, um, there's my bum walking about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Greg, you're supposed to fucking tie it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. So Greg, what's, I know we've asked you before, but obviously it's been a while since we've done this, but what, um, where are you aiming show-wise? Um, there's a regional show in May I'm going to do. Um, I think that's worked quite well with the timeline. And then I'm kind of hoping for either the Spain or Portugal shows to be around about June. Mm-hmm. I've not really seen dates then yet, but I think that's what they are pretty much every year. Um, I would really like to do the Alicante show because it just literally looks like the best show. Right. It's just like such an atmosphere, really cool, uh, light in. Um, even like the guy that runs it is just really committed to it and everything. And um, I think like the the awards and stuff are really good. So I think that'd be one of the best shows to do. And then remember the Portugal show last year with the stage coming up. Yeah. Right. And you spun around and stuff. So I think that'd be quite cool as well. Um, so yeah, just um, as the two I'm aiming for. Obviously, I'm only hoping to do one. <clears throat> I'm hoping to do one pro qualifier right. and hope that yeah. Um but that's I'm picking off say between those two shows. Yeah. No, it's uh, you want to you want to have options but yeah. at the same time you don't want to like take yourself away from like the goal of hand. Because if I think you give yourself too many options you get complacent. Yeah, no, you know I mean, I mean so, whatever one I pick first, I'm fully going in there prepared to win. Right. Um and um yeah, Calm's pretty confident as well. So I think we've done enough. This off season, they put on all the sides we need and mm-hmm. bring up the body parts. I felt we needed to bring up as well. Yeah, I'd so. say so. You have to definitely have it. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah, I think it was just obviously my top was probably still lacking just a touch. But I think I've definitely added the size there I needed, and my legs mm-hmm. have probably just kind of done their thing. So it should be quite a well balanced package, I'd imagine. Yeah, be good. What were you on stage last time at the Arnold's game? Wait. Yeah. Uh, it was 255. 255. Yeah. Callum's pretty confident. He thinks I can be about 270 on stage. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. 5'9". It's nuts. Yeah. So, well, considering, like, I've put on 20 pounds from both off-seasons and I'm in better sh- condition this time, and I finished last one at, like, 280, and I finished this one about 300. So, if it equivalents out to that, then it would work out roughly about 270-ish. Yeah, yeah. So, wait and see. As long as it translates yeah. to a good look, I'm not really bothered about the weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bodybuilding mass. <clears throat> Ken, can I be right? Yeah. Uh, in terms of the the Olympia, what did you make of that? So obviously, it was sure. probably one of the better better ones that we've seen in a long time. So yeah, I really enjoyed it, and I think the places were pretty much spot on. The only one. I would slightly disagree with was I think Samson beat Rami, but they just probably couldn't have put Rami at the top five. Yeah. They just, I would have been, um, I don't, I think a lot of people would have been fine with it, but I think a lot of people would disagree with it because obviously he's a previous champ. To go from first to six would have been a fair blow. He'd have to re re qualify, which he's not done in God knows how long. So. What about you, Jack? Yeah, the, the Rami thing, but if it, there was a bit of a drama with it saying it was well, speculation because remember he didn't turn up for the Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Um, probably pissed a lot of people off. But uh, he was fucking off anyway. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, no, I thought I thought it was brilliant. Um, I I was surprised at how Hunter came in. Um, I suppose last year. Um, yeah, kind of expected Nick to do as well as he did. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's probably the best one yet. I think Hunter's progress was like. Um, like blinded because of the fact of like the top six who's there you know what I mean like yeah yeah, obviously because being fourth last year you know you can make those improvements but if you've got guys who are better than you coming in that are new and fresh and or guys who are really good who are even better now then that's obviously going to mar over his progress so I think like he didn't have the same impact as he did last year coming in Um, but that's just the way the game is so he still improved, yeah. but there was a there was yeah. a side by there was a side by side in Nick, and it's absolutely insane for mm-hmm. a year. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. Yeah, you just can't like. So when you see guys like that, you just think like, where is there to go? Mm-hmm. And obviously, like, you know, if you've got someone like with, like Nick's mentality, 
it just becomes, you know, it's just a given that he's going to be, he's going to improve. So, um, yeah. like, I appreciate kind of Nick, how Nick looks, uh, but I still kind of like your eye kind of does go to like obviously like Derek Lunsford. Yeah, in my opinion, you know, it's just it's yeah. too it's too pretty. You know what I mean? Yeah. So even Hardy's still pretty of a physique, yeah. but he's got like yeah. a lot denser, harder muscle. That's why I think he won that top spot because I would honestly compare them quite similar. When they hit a vacuum, both tiny waist, massive lats, um, both very similar kind of shape and size. But mm -hmm. Hardy just took him on the condition front, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, definitely. But um, kind of yeah, I definitely agree what you're saying about Nick and stuff. Um, I just, as impressive as he is, there's just something that needs to change with him. I think his legs need to be bigger. Like, he's not going to get his waist any smaller. But yeah. there's just, do you know what? I actually watched a video of him. It was like, I think it was like two weeks out, and he was in a posing room. And he wasn't um, like 100% focused on controlling his stomach. And how much his stomach blows up when he doesn't control it was insane. Really? If he fucking done on Olympia stage, he would have been like past 10th. Yeah. So to yeah. consider how well he controls that on stage, like constantly tensed and even like pulling it up sometimes for a vacuum is really fucking impressive. Because mm -hmm. it must like, um... take him all his effort. That's a perfect. He's a perfect example of like how you can get too big. You mm. know what I mean? Like like Jordan did and all that. So, you know, you're definitely pushing. Like what is what should be, even the guy, even the guys who are still considered aesthetic, that amount of muscle shouldn't be on a human frame. Um, but yeah, like next that level where it's like, you're, you're gonna grow in unsightly places, getting too big. Um, Unfortunately, it's not a problem that I have. But, Even if you look at yeah. um, Samson's side shot, his waist, like from back to front, has went up big time in the last like five to six months from Arnold, like a lot. Mm. But because his abs are so fucking dense, that mm. must like really pull it in a bit. And you, mm -hmm. that's like the only thing it saves them is his abs don't let it come out. But when yeah. you look at it side to side, it was a big change in that time. But obviously, yeah. it pulls like a great vacuum from the front, which will always go small. And that saved yeah. them. <clears throat> I mean, like you have to, you have to build muscle evenly, and you know it's just going to go around your waist. If you just kind of, if you if you've got twenty four inch arms, like yeah. chances are you're going to have a big waist as well, unless it's controlled. So yeah, um, it's only so far genetic. But I'm hoping, like, see with like that four hundred grand the Hardy one, that like, you can finally sort his mono brow. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe but, against his religion. Yeah. What well, it's, it's religion to have a fucking mono brow. It's a belt, yeah, mate. Oh, it fuck in. me! It's like if someone's underlined his forehead, isn't it? It's, it's like, like, I, I said that to the Persian like, roof. I know. Well, yeah, yeah well, I, yeah. not the fucking Persian cyclops. You know what I mean? <laughs> to me, um, I mean, see the celebrations they have. Yeah, like, Rami coming back to Egypt and then Hadi going back to Iran. It's absolutely nuts. Yeah, like like fucking convoys on like their motorways and shit, like falling about. Yeah. It's mental. See, so like a fucking handshake coming in the gym. Right. <laughs> Still have to pay a gym membership. I know. Why are you guys those fucking like, <laughs> in the gym? <laughs> right. So you come back, you probably come back like to Scotland, and like the best you probably get is like a footnote. I, I'm, like bodybuilding industry aside, is like a footnote on some like local newspaper, like the Glasgow <laughs> Times or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're more they're more likely to like dig up shite on you and then put that in the front of the sun that's <laughs> what they'd rather do because uh, that always used to infuriate me, infuriate me right um obviously flex won the 212 olympia seven times mm -hmm. and like you were seeing some of like the, the, the like the athletes that we put forward for like bbc sports personality and you're like one of our own has just won the fucking mm -hmm. number one title seven times in the hardest sport on the planet. But mm. obviously, like mainstream sport doesn't give a shit. But but clearly, like like I'm not I'm not doubting like Ronnie O'Sullivan's amazing at snooker, but snooker is not what bodybuilding is. You have to be an athlete. He's, like there's no athleticism other than coordination in snooker. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how is he a sports personality, but flex loose isn't? Yeah, but look at the boys that play darts. Exactly. Like where, fucking... where did where did dark players train? 
in a in a pub. You know what I mean? No. So I was I always thought that was quite funny. Like you got this guy who's like number one in this in the sport, and he's from a shitty town in Wales. You know what I mean? So um, I, always I always hate that. how much like non credit he gets for like mm-hmm. what he's done for the sport of what he's built up, like as a sports person and like many businesses and like everybody always speaks about like Jay Cutler being like the greatest ambassador, like fucking I would give the flex all day long. Mm-hmm. I think he never gets enough uh, credit for what he's done. Yeah. I think it's obviously yeah. like being 212, it's just not that eyes, you know what I mean? My yeah. eyes are just on there, but it would have been interesting because flex, I think is one of the only guys to have beaten Hadi or never mm-hmm. been beaten by Hadi anyway. Yeah. So if Flex had actually done the Olympia, and he's beaten Darius Longford, obviously, so mm. that'd have been that'd have been really interesting. But I guess we'll we'll never know. But um, what was the reason again? Why did Flex drop out again? Twice because of his uh, wrist and shoulders. He had to go and get the stem cell, uh, and then right. when he was way to do one this year, he had a kid. Mm. So, right. Okay. Yeah. But no, that'd have been that'd have been good considering, like, you know. He's had he's never beaten him. Mm. So. Yeah, flex at like what two thirty to two forty would be fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah, wild big time. I mean, like so, he was him. He was like the look that he brought when he had to lose muscle was insane. So just yeah. imagine that, like without like it's just it's a shame. It is a shame that you know people. Him and Neil always stuff. said um, those photos when he was in the old dragons lair. You know, when mm-hmm. he was, like, pale white in the dark with the spotlight, I think he said he was about, um, like, 225 there, because even that mm-hmm. was a bit sucked down. He says, that was, like, my best look ever. So yeah. putting, like, like 10 pounds more food than him, I'd be fucking wild. Aye. I'd be someone time. just to see on stage. Yeah. What about um, Kalida as well? Yeah, he won it. Wild. Just yeah. fucking... They've never seen muscle bellies like that in my life. Yeah. Is he 5'1? Five 5'1 one? Five one or 5'2? Five uh, <laughs> yeah. They totally, but you know what? They absolutely fucked him over. Why would you get Brian Shaw to come and give him the trophy? You got absolutely yeah. fucking screwed. Aye. <laughs> that, like, was <laughs> that was deliberate. That was deliberate. Oh, 100%. Clear, he's, de- he's definitely pissed someone off like who works like, at, at the Olympia. Yeah. Probably trying to enter in like. Go. I probably trying to enter like the open and the two twelve is like I'm gonna fucking show him. <laughs> you yeah, just know when he's walking away, you're like bastards. <laughs> yeah. Is he actually is it is he actually five one? He, he five won't one. be far off it. He five one, five two, it. I think, yeah. Uh, like, he's tiny. Man. Imagine being that short. What was he like one eight seven on stage? Something like that, yeah. Mm. That's wild. Considering like how much muscle he carries in that frame. Yeah. It just shows you how small he is. Imagine him scaled up to like six foot. That'd be funny. When he walked out and hit like his his most muscular, it was just like the hardness, the veins, the separation. It was he was just peeled. It was amazing. Yeah, such a great package to bring. I (laughs) can't understand why uh, Keon drops drops so much. I don't know. I don't know if it's a condition thing because he has like great lines and like it's very pleasing, but it's not like Sean condition. No, but, but that's many fucking hard. That class were, no, no, I don't know. It's an odd one. It's weird because like to me he has the most pleasing look, just like just the flow and yeah. just how everything kind of inserts and that. It's it just like it looks just so nice. And, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I think like I mean. They are figuring out his condition. Like each time he comes on stage, every time I see him anyway, something's tweaked and something's improved. And, you know, he is, he is kind of climbing there. I do think like he will, once he kind of finds out how to get that kind of level like Sean has, yeah. there's no way Sean can beat. It's maybe just time. Dion with this condition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's maybe just time. But I mean, I think um, Patrick done quite a good job with him this year. Yeah. Because he's been, yeah. he's never been that good before on stage. Yeah. So, what about I know we keep flip off, keep flip flopping back, but uh, what about Ian as well? Yeah, that was a shock. I watched the podcast of what happened, um, and it was just like a water salt issue. Mm. Yeah, I thought that was quite odd. Like, 
why Padre did that. I was like, why? Yeah, that made that was really odd. Was Ian really said odd. like so many times, like I can't play with water or anything because it'll totally fuck me up. So Pat's like, yeah, let's fucking drop salt today and we'll do this. And Ian's like, okay. Yeah, I mean your head's like, so fuck you. yeah, yeah, your, your head's so fucked at that point that you'll just be like, no, I'm just doing anything. But it wasn't even like he was in a bad spot and they had to pull back. No, it was almost as if like this is too good to be true. So let's pull back. Yeah. That's that's what came across to me anyway. Um, yeah, Ian said, obviously, the next morning was the best he looked, but then they yeah. just couldn't hold it. Which, like, yeah. again, if his body is that like sensitive to water and salt, like that's just that's not something it. you play with at all. Yeah. You you, de- you dehydrate quite hard, don't you? Me like you drink like nothing on the daily show, yeah. Um, both of the last shows, I was like two hundred mil a meal. Right, so that's quite so, that's quite low for someone your size. Yeah, but I mean, like you know me, I I don't flatten out that easily. No. Um. Once I'm like full, I'll stay there for quite a while as long as like I'm like I got there in a good way. I'm not like pushed it hard or anything. Like, as long as like I've Aye. got to fullness, and I'll pretty much stay there unless I'm doing like serious exercise. I won't flatten out that easy. So yeah, I'm quite lucky in that way. What about you, Jack? What do you do water wise? What have you done in the, in the previous years water wise? So uh, we, to be honest, I'm probably a good example of someone who shouldn't play with uh, <laughs> water because, and I know that every time we still do it, but I think we've concluded that we won't do that again. Yeah. But, uh, this this year, the the qualifier, um, we faffed about with it and it, it just went so soft, mm. like so soft. Um, and then I think with, with like traveling and stuff as well, um, for, for the Arnolds, we used a... Uh, Diuretic for the Arnolds, we used just a touch of diazide, but um, it, yeah, it was still not quite sussed out yet. So, yeah, um, but I think, yeah, I don't think I should be playing with either because um, mm. I would say probably the best I looked last bet was like two weeks out. Yeah, and it wasn't yeah. until we started like playing with other things that started to kind of go yeah. through shit a wee bit. Because you get into that headspace, right? So, when I'm on, when I'm like deep in prep, but I'm guzzling water like easily sinking like seven liters a day without even thinking mm. but you get to that point it's, a point, it's not to those days before then then some there's this little voice that just comes to your head going right you need to start controlling your water like why you've not yeah. done that for the past 16 weeks um like I've, the amount of times i've told clients don't change your don't change your water don't mm-hmm. change this don't change that um one of the best examples mm-hmm. i had a client he done the first time I was last March and uh, didn't get the result he wanted. I, I was like, mate, lay out what you did throughout the days. I did everything you said. I was like, okay, right, cool. What about your water? He was like, oh yeah, like I kind of just sipped from like my first meal. I was like, it clearly says in the instructions not to do that. Don't like, don't pull back your water. Mm-hmm. When you check in, you've already had like two liters and you look rock hard. So why would you change that? And we changed it for the Scottish and then obviously place a lot better but um i it's if, you, if you've been having this like ridiculous amount of water throughout and you look good with it in leave it in that's mm-hmm. like something i'm I, I need to tell myself as well because um I, I i i do that too i just feel like i need to restrict it when i don't you know what i mean it's, it's just one of those stupid head fuck things yeah so last time yeah. i tried to do what um luke sander used to do for shows and he was like once you kind of get to where you're wanting, like how you want to look and you're happy, then obviously it's a game of just trying to hold that. So when he was like, okay, I need to go pee, he would gauge like how much he's peed and try yeah. taking the same amount of water with like a little bit of salt. He's probably lost Aye. a little bit of that as well. And just try and hold that. But then yeah. again, like if you're needing like take a little bit of fucking rice cake with jam, whatever, like in between that as well, just to make sure full is staying there. It's not like any you need to fucking like say, all right, I need to take this much water in X amount, blah, blah. Once I'm at a point, I was like, right, I need to just try to hold this. So whatever I'm losing, I want to take back in. Okay. <clears throat> I've, heard, I've heard of people literally measuring how much they've pissed. Yeah, I've and heard then, that too. And then, they they weigh it on the in. scale, they pee in a cup or a bottle and Aye. fucking weigh it. Mad. Aye. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, that was, that was a decent amount. I'll take in the same. Imagine just like this cunt like walking back through the crowd with like his bucket like that. Back, to, juice. Back, back to his guy, back to his coach. Here, coach, there's so much I've pissed. 
<laughs> Sitting yeah. in the car park with cock in a bottle. Right? <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's, a, it's a weird fucking game, but um, I, I remember uh, when when Luke turned pro with uh, Justin Harris, mm-hmm. like he was like, Justin Harris apparently at the time did like a thing, like a peaking thing with like blood glucose. So like he kind of gauged them a height up and down and moved through it there. I was like, oh, fuck that, that is just a pain in the tits. Fuck that. Too much. Just go by the mirror. Just people always try to make it so complicated, do they? Yeah, you just you just hear some things you're like, oh, there's there's really, but then at the same time, I know my head a week out, I'll be like, I'll try that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's nice. You get, you get suckered into these kind of things, but it is it is funny when you, you bring like a client a week out and they're like, like what are we doing? I'm like, man, like <laughs> we'll, we'll manipulate things up and down a wee bit, but we're not doing that. So we're water loading. No, but you're on ten liters. You're on like a lot, not ten liters, but you're on a lot of water. Where are you going from there? Like right. your your brain's adjusted. It's not going to do anything. But it's it's funny when you say to people like, "I may I've literally done everything. I've done everything in the book, and I can tell you what shite." And they still like it's almost as if they don't believe you. Like when I say drink in the day of the show, I'm not yeah. saying it to have a laugh. I've just watch too much stuff of people saying you need to cut your water. Yeah, it's just like one of these myth things about fucking peaking. Yeah, the end of the day, it could work for somebody. It It could, yeah. Water, I've seen people who cut water look fucking nuts, and it's like, okay, that's work for you, but may not work for you, may not work for him. You should be Mm. playing, obviously, as you know, each client individually, each person individually. Yeah, not just like one fucking shit. Yeah, play the safe game for your first, for your first goal. Like ultra yeah. safe, as in like just treat it like a workout, just yeah. like you're going to go train, just treat it like that, and then see where you go from there. You know what I mean? So like if you're going into like a regional, especially a two bros one where, um, you know you don't even need to fucking place or win to get to a pro qualifier, use that as the time just to kind of use a more relaxed approach because usually the more relaxed the physique is, the better it looks. Yeah. You know, because you're not elevating quarters all that sort of stuff, but. Yeah. I, uh, I wish I wish I could tell people a magic formula otherwise I'd be a fucking billionaire but um, yeah. aye, it just it's, funny, it's funny you say about relax because the big the big thing I think that sort of screwed me up last year was cardio mm-hmm. um, but it was yeah. because we were, yeah. we, were, we were trying to go down and wake up so there was reason behind it but see the moment I stopped cardio after prep and just took a couple of days off my like legs came to life yeah um, yeah and even the difference between the Arnold's and the qualifier, just like pulling pulling cardio out just in steps, it was like insane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like that, that's that's a learning point as well. So obviously like systemic fatigue and stress in the body plays a big part as well. So that was yeah. a that was a learning point for me too. Yeah, and the on the Arnold US, um, I stopped training and doing cardio three days out, uh, and then those the the two the three sessions prior were just like absolute like piss takes so or just barely moving any weight. Um yeah, three days sitting on your arse doing absolutely nothing, you'll look better. If you've dieted properly for like 20, 16, 12 weeks, you will a hundred percent look better. You're not gonna look worse. Unless mm-hmm. like you can do daft shit with food, obviously, but like mm-hmm. don't do that. But um yeah, and that's also another thing when you tell people like I want you to just do nothing. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, obviously, it doesn't really apply to like smaller competitors. We know Neve at Warehouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, sit and do nothing. She's like, I can't. I like, you, you fucking yeah. will. You'll listen to me. You'll sit and do nothing. Um, so thankfully, she, I think she did anyway. I don't know if she was lying to me, but um, but obviously, for bigger guys, you know, we can do ten star jumps and look completely different. So yeah, that, that kind of emphasis on like doing nothing and just letting your body kind of, you know. Just relax. That in of itself is a, w- a kind of way of peaking your physique. So, yeah, most likely not. For sure. But, um, yeah, I was going to say. I remember. I guess I said this before actually in here, but like we we're on about water there. I remember when Rob Taylor done his show in Ireland. He won. He was in like mm-hmm. Dubai, and he says he was drinking like about twelve liters of water a day, just because obviously the heat and he wanted his body heat flushed. Mm-hmm. And I remember they were posing after like ten liters, and he was like bone dry. Yeah, and it was like, like you're not exactly going to go into the show and say, right, just drink a liter on the day. Right. 
the boys right. were like, what the fuck's happening? Like, you really, I think Callum said he must have had him on about five or six litres on the day. It was just like half his water, which is still a massive amount. And he was taking mm. in quite a lot of food and it was just flushing like so well. So yeah, it just shows you like, more water in. Could be totally different. Hmm. They put more water in after Peterson as well, didn't they? Yeah. Right. So, so it just uh, shows you, like, obviously, everybody's just going to be totally different. I remember um, there's a video of Branch Warren uh, talking about like what he does, and he's like, "I don't, I don't carb up, I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't touch my water, I don't touch my sodium." Um, he's like, "I cut my water back like a tiny little bit, mm. but not a lot." And I remember listening to that. I don't think I competed at that point. And I was just like, nah, that's total bullshit. No way do you do nothing. But as you get more experienced, you realize that doing less gives you more. Yeah. So it's a very hard concept to understand when, like, the whole way through prep, you're like banging cardio, training, fucking all, like, making everything down to a T in the diet. And then someone's like, oh, less is more. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> I think totally um, like bewildering. Well, I think we all three of us, from what I've gathered, definitely from you, Greg. Anyway, have like a tendency to like just not take your foot off the gas at all. It's like literally like foot to the floor the whole way through. I'm just hoping that you stay together. Yeah. So, whereas like now, I, I didn't even do it in the preps last year. But like now, I'm kind of hoping, like from what I've learned and going forward, it's like you can strip your volume back, like periodically up to the show. So by the end, you're doing almost nothing because your body's still going to hold on to that that tissue with yeah. relatively low volume, and that's going to give you just a fresher, kind of cleaner look. So I mean, I was still I was still doing like rest pauses, drop sets, and all that sort of shit, like ten two weeks out. Mm -hmm. Sorry, ten days two weeks out. And I think that. Over time, I, I could never figure out last prep why my legs just weren't deep separated. Like in 2019, I could get my fucking hands, my, like my fingers in between the, the heads of my quad. And in 2022, I just couldn't do that at all. So yeah. it, was, it was weird, but it's, it's definitely down to just like the bigger you get, the more you have to really fine tune throughout the prep, not just that last week. Yeah, there's definitely an art to, like, once you get bigger, to make that muscle look better because, obviously, yeah. you're going to have so much muscle on your frame to try to get those, like, deep cuts, that condition of, like, all round. It's just going to be much harder. Mm. As, like, Chris was said, it's a bigger plane to land, is it? It's easier yeah. to land a fucking private jet than it is a Boeing 747, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Do you think you know it's, <laughs> like, you'll remember from your first preps as well, like, your first preps would just go like that. And then, like, now, as a super heavy, it's like... Yeah. Like, yeah. like that, all the way down. Um, so, uh, I it's, it's, a, it's a fine art, like... But then, also, because there's so few super heavies as well, there's not a lot of current... I don't, I don't feel like experience with dealing with bodies that size. You know what I mean? So, you've got, like, yeah. Cal, Cal obviously knows what he's doing. JP obviously knows what he's doing because he's worked with you know, countless guys that size, but it shows you even at the Olympia level, these guys who have worked with like next level genetic guys still miss the mark as well because you're dealing with just a, such a versatile physique being that Except big. Except one. Who? Eh? Except one. Who? You know, it was just the way I mentioned. I think Hani has like a fine art of yeah. nailing. I've never yeah. seen him miss a mark. He's never missed yeah. a mark. With fucking Jay, uh, Phil, Derek, Hadi, and fucking Chris Luke nuts this year. Yeah, yeah. That's the best Chris has looked. I, I just no, I've never seen him miss the mark. Yeah, you, you really kind of you do struggle eh, to think like who's he actually not brought in shape. You obviously he's, he's got the most Olympias under his belt, but it's like when you see the look he brings on stage, it's just so clean and like yeah. so well presented, and like the just. It's nailed. There's no excess skin anywhere. There's no water anywhere. I don't know how he manages like fucking target areas to be better, but he fucking knows. See, like, <clears throat> I'll ask you both. Do you, do you believe there's like something that only he knows that he's applying? Well, he's I worked with, pl he's worked with plenty of people videos. now. Surely people would know what he does now. Did you watch Chris's videos? No. 
of like the lead up to Olympia. <coughs> no. Uh, well, I watched them, and like, there's obviously loads of ha- uh, fucking honey being there, and like, honestly, it was down to like how Chris cut his cut his uh, like chips. Right. He was. He was like. He was asking Chris, he goes, see when you cut your uh, potatoes into chips or you had them, like, all one? He goes, which one di- which one digested better? Right. And Chris was like, oh, I don't know, maybe when it was cut, he was like, right, cut from now on. And he was like, uh, go check your weight after this meal. And Chris was like, okay. And he had a quick look at him. He's like, right, do you feel watery or bloated, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, right. Right, okay, so we'll have this meal at, at this time, have this much water, um, okay, cut your uh, salmon back to this amount, and so on. It was like literally fucking so many little things. Mm. Maybe it's just more on it. Has like the best eye. I don't know, but it was like so precise what you had them doing. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, like I said, it's just you just must have that fucking eagle eye. Maybe, but it was literally so precise of what he was doing. Mm-hmm. And like even um, I remember um. Fuad mentioned a few times, he was just like, Hani's like little bits and just his eye of like everything is just amazing. Yeah. There's maybe not like all sciencey and everything, it's just maybe just the, like the perfection of little things just brings it in like that. Mm. I mean, like, aseto has got a pretty good record as well, obviously, mm. but obviously not as, not as good as Hani's in terms of consistency, but like, aseto will tell you as well, he's like, I don't have a fucking clue what protein does when, you, when it goes in the body. I just know your chicken breast, you'll look like this. Yeah. A steak, you'll look like this. And like when you think about it that way, it's like that's exactly what it is. You know what I mean? It's... To be fair, this year he had Ramon and um, Rafa looking nuts. Mm. They yeah. Were in excellent yeah. condition. Like really fucking good. Yeah. I think, what do you think like Rafa has to do to get anywhere near that top? That top More neighbor? muscle? Yeah. What's you think even with- you think without spoiling, he could do that without spoiling his physique. You can very much tell he's a machine-based guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's probably he's probably never deadlifted like in years. I can't see him doing fucking heavy dumbbell rows in because his lines are so clean and yeah. the muscles so nice. There's none of that like gnarly look that like fucking dense tissue that's been stuck on by some yeah. heavy movements with like sheer grit. You yeah. can tell he does everything with like probably like what Jay done, leaving like maybe a rep in the tank. Yeah. It's a lot of volume. Maybe. Because I mean you've seen how flex trains and he's a very big advocate of how flex trains as well. So I'd mm-hmm. imagine it is probably volume over like mm-hmm. load. Yeah. I mean I feel like um I feel like Andrew Jack's a bit like that. Yeah. But he yeah, probably I've, tickles dumbbells and puts on muscle. Yeah, I've, I've fucking seen that. I've seen Andrew Jack train in person. It's yeah. not inspiring at all. It's, I. And he's it's, strong as well. Train. He probably could. What was that? He's, he's very strong. He probably could train like an animal. He just wouldn't. I mean, yeah, what did, what did you say, Jack? And I've not seen him train, but I've seen him walking into Ultimate Fitness uh-huh. in Birmingham. And he's a big boy. He's gigantic. Oh, yeah. It's, it's big boy. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah, I think uh, I think Ian said it like perfectly. He was like, "You have to see him in person." Yeah, you can't you can't believe that's a real person. So that that was that's what, that was my impression. As well. yeah. yeah, that was that he, was my impression as well. He so. was at the the JP meet and greet in mm-hmm. the Hilton, and he was sat in the corner, mm-hmm. and like I've never seen someone fill like a part of a room. So much of my life, like shoulder to shoulder, touching the wall, just Aye. like so wide. Aye. So real estate wide. taking up a lot. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's just like you're you're literally like I'm five eleven, so he's what six two. That's not that much taller, but you 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 feel like you're looking at him like that. Yeah, yeah. And then like because there's wind like that in his shoulders as well. It's just you just you know you feel like taking up golf when you stand next to him. <laughs> He's a big boy. It's mad yeah. to think that there was like three 300 pound bodybuilders on the Olympia stage. It was him, Samson. Oh, Ryan. right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, that was actually the most amazing thing I thought when Samson stood next to Rami. Mm. It was just like, he's not losing anything no. at all. 
I thought you had all in size. I was insane. That was good. Yeah. Apart from even though Rami's back is like fucked for whatever way it's fucked. Um like Samson's still kind of lacked a wee bit through the to the back, I thought, but everything else was like trumping Rami easy. So it's the first time he's been put into perspective, I think. Oh yeah. And yeah. it's scary because he's probably still got a lot more to to push. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, his like peak off season look was fucking mm-hmm. stupid. Three thirty or something, yeah. It was yeah. more than that. It was just fucking retarded. Mm-hmm. Like he didn't he just say like, like he needed a fucking walking stick to do his cardio? <laughs> I'd imagine that. That's really when you know you're fucking big. Is when you're all, you're disabled because you're so big. Mm. You know what I mean? Milos was probably just like just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> It was like I got sent a photo of this bit unrelated, but it's kind of related. I got sent a photo of um remember you know Nick Anderson, mm. your biggest fan. Um like him like carrying around a chair in pure gym with his clients. So every ex- <laughs> every exercise, he was Not like bad show. I you just fucking sit there on it. Oh fucking funny. I can just imagine that's what Sam would be like if he was a PT. Yeah, fuck that. Because obviously yeah. Yeah, you start doing PT, so know what it's like when you're with a client. You're like, fuck, I'm, I need to sit down. I know it looks unprofessional, <laughs> but I'm sitting down. My back uh, bum. I, I always just go and sit on another machine and try and shout. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was taking a seat on the machine, just trying to wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember, I was just going back to Milos there. I remember, do you ever listen to the podcast where JP was speaking about when he was coached by him? No. Obviously, like, JP wanted to, like, push his body to the absolute max so he went to Milos and he was like I'll, I'll I'll do the diet but I'm not doing your training I'll I'll do my training so mm-hmm. Milos was like fair enough and I think um, Jordan says he went up to like 8,000 calories a day but it got to a point like his body weight was, wasn't budging and he was just like fucking brimmed the food and he was like I just I don't think I can eat anymore and Milos was like go down to Tesco's and go and buy some pancakes and eat, eat as many of them as you can it was literally just like grab anything and eat. I fuck just, yeah, yeah. Stuff. Oh, yeah. Fuck that. Like 8,000 cars a day, like that's giving me the fear. Yeah, I mean, so does, so does Milos' training though. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. <clears throat> it, doesn't, it doesn't look fun at all. It's giant sets, isn't it? Yeah. Imagine trying to do that training with 8,000 calories in your stomach. I know. I know. No, <laughs> no way. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't be Neil Curry's. Was it his chest workout? Yeah. It was fucking 20 pages long. I know. I didn't even understand it. I was got bored by reading it. Aye. Never mind doing it. Aye. Is he he doing his own training? No, I'm not sure. He does like his own high volume stuff. What, Uh Neil? Yeah. I think, um, I thought Ben was... Ben doing his training as well. I think Ben's doing his training as well. Yeah. Not sure. He does a lot of volume, like... Yeah. Yeah. I think he was talking about like how um like he's just going to like the like the kind of well it's now considered like the norm is like the the one working set the one back off yeah. and he's just like blown away by it and I was like it's funny when you hear I mean I'm sure you've both got clients where they've been doing like the four sets of ten the fucking so yeah. on and so forth yeah. and you're like right one working set and one back off and then they're fucking blown away by it like oh blah, blah, blah. And I was like yeah. It's it's way better when you think of it that way. Mm. Like, but yeah, I had a client, a new client recently start with me. He's actually already binned it uh, after a month, but um, he was like, can I just keep doing my same training? And I was like, you've come to me for coaching and you yeah, want yeah. to keep doing the same thing? The fucking point is that? Mm-hmm. I'm just not really grasping like this one set. I'm like, fucking You can't apply yourself, that's all. Yeah, yeah. With yeah. that, you've just got to ask people how they feel. How do you feel after doing your four sets of ten? And how do you feel after doing your top set back off set? Mm-hmm. Right, but they'll put the same effort into that one set as they would do on their four sets. Yeah, yeah. Because they've got loads fucking left in the tank, and they'll just do that one. Like I'm getting way less from this workout than I did in mine. It's like, well, fucking apply yourself. Stop being a yeah. bitch. And do that one yeah. set pro- like properly. All right. And then you get them in. They're like, oh, all right, yeah, okay, I get it now. No, yeah. they'll do like the, they'll get to like six reps and they probably could do like 12. Then they start like shaking, pretending like they're failing, like fuck off. And do <laughs> the, pretend, the, the pretend fails so fucking easy to spot. 
Yeah, I don't actually let him stop. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking keep going. See, if you call someone a cunt while they're doing like mid set, they usually keep going because they're like, they're so pissed off. I call him like a little faggot bitch. That really annoys me. <laughs> <when they're going. laughs> Graham used to do that to me in the, in, in the busy gym in front of everyone. I no. was like, that was the, the motive to keep on pushing. It always worked. Yeah. Definitely, it definitely fucking works. Always works. Last, uh, last, last week, me and Rob were doing legs. <laughs> and he, he got to 10 and he was like, he was almost, he was like pretty finished. I goes, five more. And the gym was packed. And he looked <laughs> up and he seen everybody. He's like, everybody looked at like, he was like, fuck. So he had to do five. And he got to 13 and he was like, I could see there wasn't two there. I was like, you're going to get these two. Aye. And he got one, and he's like, this last one, it was a grinder. It was on the hatch squat, and he got up, locked it, and just all the colour left his Aye. face. And Aye. you just see him like, oh, oh. and he went round, and he looked at the window, and he was like trying to run towards the window. <laughs> and then, oh, and this cue, like flying across the gym out the window. <laughs> that That's what it needs to be. That was a good set. Yeah, it's funny when you're like, you're five, you're like, ah, where the fuck did you get five from? It's like, I don't know. <laughs> I went, like, everybody just looked up because they heard him screaming at 10 and I went five more and I was like oh. <laughs> everyone had to watch this <laughs> aye that's, that's just definitely the way it fucking should be but like most like most people just do not go anywhere near what they can actually do no but also hate at the same time <coughs> trying to convey that and you take a photo you take a, like a video of your own training and it's like piss easy yeah yeah it's always <laughs> I think that's where you have to like be, well, for me anyway, but more proactive and expose yourself to that level of like next level. So I, I've always trained by myself. So I've not really had anyone to enlighten me to what extent you can actually kind of work to. Mm-hmm. So that's how a couple of sessions down, now we're McGregg and I'm like coming back to him and I'm like, well, actually, hang on a second. Mm-hmm. Maybe I could be, and training sort of changed since then. So I think it's like, if you do doubt that, like expose yourself to, to, other people train with other people as well, you know. Yeah, I think, yeah, you know, I think you train hard until Sony shows you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then it sets the bar for you, you know, and then your training changes for good. And it doesn't yeah. matter. Once I mean, you like, go to that point and you like you realize there's way more there, and you push yourself to that extent, and like you didn't die, nothing broke. There's like mm-hmm. a euphoria feeling of like fuck, I really took that set to the extreme, and it's like almost like endorphins come over you, like how fucking good that felt. And you're mm-hmm. like, what more? When you yeah. pull off like some big like PB set or whatever it may be, or you've just totally blown your old reps out of the water, and you're like, that was amazing. Like, I can't wait to go and do that again. Like next week and beat it. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I had a, ham, hammies were a funny one for me, right? So the the seated ham curl, I I hit a point where I'm like fully stacking the seated ham curl for like 15, 20 reps, and I went down to Aberdeen McGregor, and he's mm-hmm. like, well, jump on the line ham curl first, and like fuck up your hammies and that and then jump on it. And it's like, shit like that, that's like, Aye. You know I mean? it's like opened up a new kind of level of training for me. And it's like, I never thought that before. So it's something mm, yeah. as simple as that, you know? Yeah, that's exactly it. But too many, I think too many people are too proud, you know, like they think yeah. like they are the pinnacle of their yeah. own training. But in well, fact, like, <clears throat> always be seeking like new stuff. No one, no one's like, there's always someone that trains harder than you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, but yeah, that's a big, a big downfall for a lot of people. But um, anything else, topic-wise? Anything new? No. We've covered most bases. Yeah. All the recent events and current things with us. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, a fruitful year, I'd say. Sure. Good year. So. Big one. Um, aye, well, it's coming up to an hour anyway. So, well, uh, we always call it a day an hour. But it's good to kind of get this ball rolling again. Um, we'll get questions for, for next week now that people know that we're back up and running doing this. So, and that allow us to to delve into certain topics and that. But no, I think it was a, a good way to kick us off anyway. So, um, appreciate the, everyone watching if you made it this far. Uh, like I said, we'll get these back up and running now that obviously 2023 is going to be a big, big year. Uh, three slightly different perspectives on on um, where we're currently at in terms of training and, and output. So it will be good for you to tag along and kind of listen to what we've got got to say. So appreciate that. 
remember to subscribe to the channel, do all that kind of social media shite, and we'll see you next time. Peace out, guys. Cheers. Cheers, guys.